The Whistle Stop Cafe in Tacna was filled with such friendly, interesting people that I decided to stay and do another tea party on the road here, this time with Bruce Wall. And he went and specifically got me his cowboy hat on so that we'd have a cowboy here. But of course he drove up on a, a four-wheeler with camouflage on it. Is that what you drive? I Is that have, your main? I have a golf cart okay. and a Ranger and my quad and my Jeep. You have multi-vehicles for oh, all yeah. different situations. So you've lived here for how long? Eleven and a half years. Where'd you come from? Originally from Holtville, California. Oh, okay. Just, uh, it's 42 miles from here to Yuma and 42 miles from Yuma to Holtville. So what brought you here? Why are you staying uh, here? I love the desert. Okay. And I used to work here in the produce in the fall and spring, it was seasonal. And the first time I went out camping, I was hooked. And I promised myself when I was young that I would buy a place here uh, when I get ready to retire, which I'm retired now, I just do a little part-time work. Mm -hmm. So tell me about your dogs. My dogs? Uh, well, I, I adopted this one little dog. She's a Chihuahua pug, excuse me. And then her husband, his name was Wee Wee, and he was Chihuahua Queensland. But people, uh, unfortunately, will take their, uh, their puppies because they don't want them out in the desert and leave them. They think the coyotes are going to eat it, and they starve. And, and so uh, people, when they find him in the desert like that, they take him to my house because they know I'll take care of him. So you adopt all the abandoned desert dogs. And then I, I try to uh, try to give them away. And then Do you have to nurse them back to health first because they've been left well, in the desert? Well, no, just a little food and water. They're uh -huh. fine. I, I, I found two, or they came up to me when I was out fishing. They smelt my bait. And they were, uh, uh, one was a black lab and a uh, golden retriever. And they, they were skin and bone. They were just about starved. But I uh, brought them back to health and then found homes for them. So it worked out. But... Uh, you get a name like that, and then when people start bringing and dropping their dogs over the fence, next thing you know, you've got more than you can handle. So how many do you have right now? I'm down to five. Five. I've had what was the top you had? Fourteen. Fourteen. I've Fourteen had, at one time. I've had at two Did different times. you live times in the so desert. Oh, yes. <laughs> With lots of room and, and no neighbors to the, complain. The owner here says that when I die, I, I want to be reincarnated as one of your dogs. <laughs> Because they have their own, I've made this homemade barbecue grill, and I barbecue chicken quarters for them because I, <laughs> I get them at a good price. And uh, I barbecue for my dogs. They have their own swimming hole. I take them for walks, and they get uh -huh. to go swimming. And they're like little kids. They have a good life. Oh, they're happy. Happy dogs. <laughs> yeah, my do and my dog, I won't own a dog that, that that's aggressive that might bite somebody. So tell me some interesting stories from your interesting life. Interesting stories? You, I know you have interesting stories. Uh, well. Any interesting stories you can actually share publicly? Uh, old legal stuff? <laughs> it doesn't matter as long as you, you can't get prosecuted spot. now. No, no I'm, not a, I'm not an evil outlaw. I've done a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, I used to bring marijuana across the border 40, 40 something years ago, and there's a story written about that. And uh, the Border Patrol used some of the ways that I used to do it in their training now. And, uh, but I don't like drugs. Uh, marijuana, I, I, don't, I don't do any drugs. I drink beer. Okay, some people consider that a drug. But uh, marijuana, I don't think bothers anybody. I've, I've never had any major problems with them. But the big thing now is methamphetamine, mm. and uh, and uh, I, I know how that is, and, and what the people are going through, and it's uh, they're just throwing their lives away. And then they, you know, I I, I hate drugs. I, I hate what drugs do to people. But uh, I, I come from Holtville. That's seven miles north of the Mexican border. I grew up in a town that could uh, outdo any American graffiti. All the hot rods and parties, and it went on for like three decades. Nothing, <laughs> nothing but fun. And I, I feel very fortunate that I, I was able to take part in that. Uh, there's a lot of history there. Bruce, what's going on, man? And that much? Are you looking for trouble? Uh, it seems to find me every damn day. <laughs> that's, that's what he gets paid for, looking for trouble. If it didn't, you wouldn't have a job. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the sheriff department, they're pretty good guys around here. Yeah, they seem to be. Yeah. As long as you obey the law, they're, they're nice. What else do you want us to know about you? Uh, or your life, or your experiences? What can we learn from you? Before we go any further, let's wait for the sheriff to leave. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, let's have some tea. <laughs> I, live, I live an interesting life. I, 
a lot of a lot of really good things, a lot of really bad things. Uh, uh, I've been a fireman, volunteer fireman. I've, I've oh, me too. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I uh, I didn't do good in school at all. I'm a high school dropout. I couldn't read till I was 23. But I've been to uh, with CPR. I used to be an mm -hmm. instructor to teach people to be CPR instructors. Excellent. Uh, I've been to advance all the extrication. Uh, but uh, right now, I don't have to worry about nothing because. <laughs> Because I'm retired and I don't like it. What's the most interesting things you've learned? What's your wisdom to pass on to us? Patience. Mm -hmm. Patience. No, you don't worry about that. What do you have to learn patience about? Because if you don't have patience, you just make things a lot worse. Mm. You have to have patience with everything. If you, if you don't have patience and you get in a hurry, whatever it is that you need, that you should have patience for, will go away. You will chase it away. And it will, it will just hold you back. So do you think that you've missed out on a lot without ha for not having patience, or you've lost things from not In having In the beginning, patience? when you're young, of course, young people don't have patience. And I, I've lived an interesting life, of, a lot of death. Of course, everybody goes through that. Mm -hmm. Getting blamed when you, for something you haven't done. Mm -hmm. I told myself when I was a little kid, so when I grow up, I'm not going to be like that. And my patience has to pay off. Because I'm not like them. If I was like them, I would be filled with anger. Mm -hmm. And I would be going out of my way to make people feel bad. And I, with my patience, I finally made it. And I've never been happier. God. I'm here because uh, I had patience, you know. I almost gave up a few times. I was younger. There was a lot of bad things going on that wouldn't stop. It was a storm from from the day I was born to about up till the time I was 50. It just wouldn't go away. But I didn't want to be like the people that created the storm. And now I've moved to a place. I'm away from those people, people have moved away and things change and my patience has paid off.